Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. This next question or comment comes from Hadronic. Uh, and this is in response to the initial setup options of the TB3, uh, a video I did in April 2019. Uh, Hadronic writes, hello, thanks for the channel, I'm already registered. Well, welcome on board. Um, my TB3 uh, decalibrated the screen. I already did the process, step record and a real, uh, real time record in option four, but it didn't work. Do you have any suggestions how to solve it? I already did the reset, but that seems to have be dealing uh, with just software reset. Do you know how to do a hardware reset? Thank you. Um, interesting one. Well, when you say you, you had selected option four, did you mean uh, then undertake the 27, I think, steps to recalibrate the screen? Uh, it's quite an in-depth process on this particular machine and if you don't do it correctly you really just have to go back and start again. If you're already on a factory reset and screen recalibration then I'm afraid you might find the screen interface is damaged so um, something is causing that uh, pro causing that screen not to recalibrate properly um, and you're probably going to find yourself on the on the on the on the uh, route of service tech to be honest. Um, it simply could be a fact that the connector is, has dislodged itself. Um, the thing about electronics is even though you can't see it, actually the, the, the molecules are, are moving. Um, and reality is that when the molecules move, uh, it slowly starts to dislodge itself. They can get oxidized. There can be all kinds of reasons why the connectors become um, uh, don't connect properly anymore. Um, that can be relatively easy to solve. It can, you know, can be just a sort of case of wiggling the connector or just taking the connector out and giving the contacts a bit of a squirt with contact cleaner. Um, but if it is a failed membrane, as in the, the bit on top of the screen that actually registered where you touch the screen, then that could be a new screen. Um, sorry, I can't be of more help, but these things are always difficult to diagnose over uh, a YouTube channel, I, you know, unless you've got the thing in front of you, you can sort of go through the diagnostic process. It becomes very difficult. Next comment or question comes from Jeff Ashley, and this is in response to uh, connecting the TRAS MC707 MX1 not class compliant video, a video I did in May 2022. Um, and Jeff writes, I recently, finally, after years of longing for one, acquired an MX1. I had a JU06A, an SE02, a VT4, and a TR6S, and wanted to have all play together with an MX1 master tempo start, stop, clock, and also run key step 37 to play live between the various instruments. Hmm. I have all the MIDI channels individually set on the, each device, along with the battery, USB settings where needed, and I think I have the MX1 properly set up. Set up. It was second hand and I did a factory reset. Well, you can't go wrong with doing a factory reset because it should reset it back to uh, a working condition. Um, I've always said this, you don't know what lunatic has had the machine before you have. Um, so that's my policy. I always do a factory reset after I've got the machine. That way I know that the lunatic who's mucked it up is me. Um, anyway, uh, da 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 but I can't get key step to play any synths. I can get it to start stop with the TR6S, the JU6A, and I have audio over USB for all, but nothing from the SEO2 as far as MIDI sync goes, and I haven't fiddled, haven't fiddled much with the VT4 yet. Are you aware of any reason why this isn't working? Boom, 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 boom. So 
again, another one of these diagnostic ones where all I can do is give you some of the things I would troubleshoot. Um, so here are the pointers. Firstly, the SEO2 is not a boutique uh, in the same way that the other boutiques are. And I'm not sure that the SEO2 is included in the list of compatible devices with the MX1. Um, I did look, scan the list of compatible devices and I didn't see the SEO2. Doesn't mean it's not there, it just means I didn't see it when I scanned it. Um, if you're using the key step as a master clock source, then this needs to be connected to the mini MIDI DIN MIDI in DIN socket. You can't use the USB in because it won't be able to read it. Um, the MX1 needs to be set up with the clock source set to MIDI DIN in. Uh, this should ensure the MX1 is receiving the correct clock source and the clock source will then be distributed to any device connected to the MX1, either via USB or through the out MIDI socket. Um, the MX1 will just move MIDI signals uh, on as they are received by the unit, i.e. a signal received on channel 2 will be tra transmitted on channel 2. Uh, therefore, as long as the source on the MX1 is set to the DIN socket, it should be onwardly transmitted. Uh, in theory, MIDI received on the MIDI DIN socket should be transmitted on the U MIDI USB and the MIDI out DIN socket. Uh, my experience has been a little bit hit and miss on this, I have to be honest. But MIDI received on the DIN socket does get transmitted on the MIDI DIN out when the MIDI DIN out is set to throw. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Hopefully these pointers will start to sort of unravel what's going on here.